Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. सहनौ भुनत्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विना बदी तमस्तु मावित विशावहै ओम शांति 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 6 to 10 of chapter 3. Karmendriyani Sayyam Yah Karmendriyani Sayyam Ya Aste Manasas Maran Ya Aste Manasas Maran Indriyartan Vimodhatma Indriyartan Vimodhatma Mithyachara Sa Uchate Mithyachara Sa Uchate Yastvindriyani manasa Yastvindriyani manasa Niyam yarabhater juna Niyam yarabhater juna Karmendriyai karma yogam Karmendriyai karma yogam Asatta savishishyate Asakta savishishyate Niyatam kuru karmatvam Niyatam kuru karmatvam Karma jayo hya karmanah Karma jayo hya karmanah Sharira yatra pichate Sharira yatra pichate Na prasidhye da karmanah Na prasidhye da karmanah 
यज्ञाकर्मणोन्त्र लोको कर्म बंधन लोको कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कौंतेय तदर्थ कर्म कौंते मुक्त संग सचर सह यज्ञा प्रजा सृष्ट्वा सह यज्ञा प्रजा सृष्ट्वा पुरोवाच प्रजापति पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रसविष्य अनेन प्रसविष्य हरिओम एंड वेरी गुड डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी वेर seeing the deeper meaning of prasavishyadvam translated as may you propagate but if you go deep into it it starts speaking to you it starts giving you so many messages see when i say that when you go deep into it it starts speaking to you that is something which you will start experiencing when you get into the yogic approach and you consistently put your efforts initially when you come across all these you will only try to understand them as external concepts now externally you may understand so many things what i mean by externally is something which is separate from your life for example let's say you come across a principle we say you should be cheerful what is cheer now initially you will understand cheer as an external concept meaning there will be no connection between you and that quality which you are reading about but there will be that appreciation you will be able to appreciate that as a concept but have you internalized uh, internalized it fully the answer would be no this is how every sadhak um you know slowly grows whenever you get introduced to, to something first it is an external concept for you you will get a lot of information about it but there is the the there will be no personal connection between you and whatever you are studying so what do we do in the yogic approach we bridge that gap we internalize whatever we are learning this is an essential aspect of yogic approach now what is interesting is if you take this verse 
Now there are main messages, but at the same time, the construction of this verse has been made in such a way that there are other side messages which you get. And those so-called side messages, I'm putting them in quotes, they themselves can really transform you. See, like, let's take this verse, Sahayagnyaha Praja Srishtva Purovacha Prajapatihi Anena Prasavishyadvam Esha Vostvishta Kama Dhuk. This is the verse. Now, we first started with what uh, does it mean by Agnya and how Saha Yagnya along with Yagnya, the creator Prajapati he created the Prajaha. And then what is the meaning of Srishtva, Pura, Pura, Uvacha, everything we saw. And then in the second line, we saw what do we mean by Ishta Kama, and then Ishta Kama Dukh, that is the Kama Dhenu. And then we are also in the process of uh, unraveling the sadhana messages from Prasavishyadvam. But when we are going through all this, there is one word, Anena. The second line starts with Anena. Now, that is a very uh, simple word. Anena means by this. Anena prasavishyadvam means by this may you propagate. The word is a very simple word. It looks so innocuous. And when we are getting into the depth of these main principles, we will generally miss that. But in the yogic approach, we don't miss anything actually. Certain things may not be expounded here because enough, sometimes, sometimes enough material is given so that you reflect and also discover certain things on your own. That is different. But otherwise, when we use the yogic approach, we look into every little detail. So, what is the significance of this word anena? I am taking this as an example and giving you, so that you uh, begin to see the, the depth of this yogic approach which our masters have used. Now, today when we started I was telling you how when you start, uh, when you get introduced uh, to a principle, first you understand it externally and then over a period of time through sadhana you internalize it. That is being conveyed by this word anena, by this. Now you may uh, wonder how is it possible? <laughs> what is this? Anena is another, it's a declension of the word I am. I am means uh, this. So for that, you we need to go to the previous verse. In the previous verse, he introduced this principle of yajna. And he said, all other actions will bind you. Karma bandhanaha will be there. But yajnyartat karma, that is, those actions which are done for the sake of yajna, will liberate you. This is, this is what he said. He introduces the principle of yajna. So when he is introducing, 
in the second line what he said is tadartham karma kaunteya means oh kaunteya o oh arjuna tadartham karma tad artham karma means he had introduced yagna in the first line and then he said tat artham karma you do all your actions for the sake of yagna the spirit of yagna so we saw that we have seen that already i am not going into the full explanation of that now in this verse he is using the word anena इज इट सह यज्ञा प्रजा सृष्ट्वा पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेन प्रसविष्य ध्वम बाय दिस मे यू प्रोपगेट सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस द मेसेज इज द सेम तदर्थम कर्म डू ऑल द एक्शन फॉर द सेक ऑफ यज्ञ बट देर इज अ वेरी सटल डिफरेंस दिस इज वेर द योगिक अप्रोच हेल्प्स it's not mere uh, mastery over the sanskritam language which will help sanskritam is a language but it is the yogic approach the meditative approach which can help you to derive the energy from it and from there when you when you eke out the wisdom it is totally uh, different different in terms of length different in terms of depth completely different so in the previous verse when he introduced the principle of yagna he referred to yagna as tat that now when he is going into a little more depth and he is getting into this part where he says by this may you propagate using yagna now you should transform yourself and you should transform your life and uh, you know using yagna now fulfill all your goals your ishta kama all your uh, ichha now when he gets into all that that is the practical application of the principle of yagna and benefiting from it he uses the word this not once anena prasavishyadvam once right by this may you propagate esha vostvishta kama dukh esha again means this he has used two words both means this this see in the scriptures they don't waste words when something is repetitive as a sadhak you need to wake up you need to look into it and when we apply the yogic approach the divine wisdom automatically is decoded so why is he using the word this here see when we talk of that the word that generally means something which is far away from you that is what i started by saying when you first get introduced to a principle you will understand it externally something which is apart from you but as you start progressing spiritually you will master this technique of internalizing these principles it is only when you internalize these principles it will start transforming your life when you have external knowledge about something that will not transform you but you it will not create any transformation but you will have a lot of information that will uh lead to a state of appreciation you will say yeah i mean it is really wonderful amazing these sunday sessions are really very good yogeshri goes into a lot of depth that is just a mere appreciation we are not 
going to stop with that. As sadhaks, you should not stop with mere appreciation. You should learn to internalize and make this knowledge your own, your experience. Then it is called wisdom. When the knowledge is external, when you are when you're just having some information, it is called knowledge, jnanam. See, sometimes we use the word jnanam to mean wisdom also. In this context, I am uh, uh, explaining this principle to you. So, it is better to define it that way. But when the same information is processed by you and you internalize it, then it becomes wisdom for you. It becomes your own experience. That is called Vijnana, wisdom. Now, in the previous verse he said Tat. He referred to Yajna as that. So, as you are reading, I didn't explain at that time. Because uh, when the picture is complete, when we see both sides of it, it will become uh, more clear to you. So, when you are beginning to uh, get introduced to this principle, it is something far away from you. It is at the Jnanam level. You will gain a lot of information. You will, um, you will probably be able to answer questions if somebody asks you. All these things will be possible, but it will not create any transformation within you because it is not yet your experience. So, here in this verse, he is talking about prasavishyadvam means by this, use this effectively and achieve prasavishyadvam. May you propagate, may you progress. Use this to manifest all your goals, ishta kama dukh. Let this be your ishta kama dukh. So, when he is talking of the practical application and its subsequent benefits, that is possible only if you internalize this principle of yajna. This, the, whatever is being explained here is not applicable only to yajna. This is applicable to all principles. But here, since it is Agnya, we are seeing it with respect to that. So, when it comes to the inner personal transformation and reaping the full benefits of Yajna, he says, this, anena, by this may you propagate. Esha Vostvishtakamadhuk. Esha means again, let this be the wish fulfilling cow of your desires. So, now what is far away from you, the external knowledge should be internalized. This is the subtle message he is giving as he is giving the other main messages. But what is interesting is, this so-called side message itself is so deep. If you just take an intellectual view of this whole thing and if you read it, Anena prasavishyadvam esho vostvishta kamaduk By this may you propagate, let this be your wish-fulfilling cow of your desires. It's not wrong, whatever your understanding is, but the real, real message which can transform you will be completely missed. For that, you need to absorb the energy which Lord Krishna is giving, the energy which Veda Vyasa is providing. It is only a yogi who can fully absorb the uh, message of the scriptures. Why? Because everything is experienced by a yogi. 
So you should understand the difference between external knowledge and internal knowledge. Here in this context, internal knowledge means experiential knowledge. So you may go on reading about cheer. I gave you the example of cheer to start with. What is cheer? You may read, as you see the dictionary definition of cheer. And then you may read various articles about cheer. What great psychologists have said about cheer. What great masters have said about cheer. All these things you may do. But the, all this is a part of your external knowledge. It will give you a lot of information. You may, you will learn to appreciate it. But it will not create a transformation within you. It is not yet your experience. You may read so much about the quality of cheer and yet in life you may be a morose person. Then when can we say you have internalized that principle of cheer? The moment you become cheerful, the day you uh, cure yourself of uh, all moroseness and you actually become cheerful, that is when we can say your external knowledge now has become internal knowledge, that is wisdom. Your jnanam has become vijnanam. That has become this. Tat, tadartam has become anena, ayam or esha, this. So, when you are getting into the, this principle of yajna, it will start off like this only. Week after week, so many uh, dimensions are being given. So, first you will be, uh, you, you will get into a state of wonderment, ascharyam, you know. Oh, oh, so much is there, amazing. I, I had a different... Uh, concept about yajna, my understanding was totally different. The yogic significance of yajna is amazing. And then as we are seeing different um, aspects of yajna, again, you become amazed. You, you start appreciating. And then within each aspect, when we see different dimensions, you say, it's, it's really mind-boggling. You get inspired. But if you stop with that, that will not give you the full benefits. You will become more knowledgeable. You will become a pundit, a scholar. You will gain scholastic knowledge of yajna. But in order to reap the full benefits of yajna, you have to internalize it. Sadhana has to be done. The day you actually start practicing yajna consciously and then the day you uh, create a habit, it becomes a habit for you. That is the day you can say, I have mastered it. So the day you start practicing it, it becomes your wisdom, personal experience. And the day it becomes a habit for you, you have practiced enough so that it has become a habit for you, you can say, you are established in this wisdom. This is the uh, process. These are the different stages by which you actually grow. And this is exactly the reason why he used the word, uh, the phrase Chita Pragnya. In, in a previous chapter we saw, when he was talking about the person who has achieved the state of perfection, he used the word Sthita Pragnya, a person who is established in awareness or wisdom. Of course, we, we have seen that in a lot of uh, depth. He uses the word getting established. So one is to start gaining knowledge first, information, 
start appreciating it because if you don't appreciate something you will never get inspired and if you are not inspired you will not internalize it you will not be able to practice it that is why understanding and appreciation is other starting steps but then see that is where the real test for a sadhak comes when you learn to appreciate a principle the ignorance clouds the mind and it will make you feel ah i am now understood it's amazing now let me go to the next i have i am now finished i have uh, finished the bhagavad gita that is where you need to be very careful as a sadhak mere understanding and appreciation of a principle doesn't mean you have gained the wisdom there is a very long road there after which you need to cover you should through sadhana start internalizing it and when you start internalizing it you you will start to convert it into vijnanam wisdom and that is not enough you should now do more and more sadhana and tapas till you get established in that wisdom and when can you say you are established in that wisdom when it becomes your first nature when it creates a complete transformation within you when it becomes a non effort that is uh, when it becomes an effortless habit it becomes an automatic process a few verses later we will be seeing that aspect also very interesting because when you keep on practicing something after a while that will become effortless it will become like an instinct for you that is when you can say i am established in this wisdom so in all the scriptures they highlighted on this principle of gaining true knowledge what they are referring to is wisdom unless and until you uh, internalize it unless and until you it becomes a your personal experience you can never say your knowledge is complete if you uh, uh, just do a small analysis it will be very interesting for you whatever you say today whatever you talk if you just make an analysis how much am i am i talking from my experience how much am i talking from knowledge knowledge here means external knowledge experience means internal knowledge okay you will be totally surprised that more than 90 or probably even 95 or 99 percent we can say whatever you are saying whatever you are you seem to know is all external knowledge only our education system itself has deteriorated in the sense the uh, principle of internalization is not there in today's education system uh, whom do you call an intelligent student today one who gains more information he, re- he reads a lot of books and gathers a lot of information immediately we say oh he is very intelligent but our yogis uh, had a different approach to it that is only the first step they said a person who gains the wisdom that is internalizes the knowledge that person only has completed the process so what is the difference between the great yogis and scholars see this is something which you need to think about a yogi uh let us say he is he has uh, st- uh studied the bhagavad gita a scholar also has studied the bhagavad gita now when they talk what is the difference they may be saying the same thing a scholar may be able to do more hair splitting analysis in terms of sanskritam language 
the logical construction, all these things. A yogi may or may not be able to do all that. But everything which he speaks, he will speak from his wisdom, not merely from knowledge. And that is why Krishna, in one of the verses, he says, Arjuna, I will give you knowledge with wisdom. Means I will give you knowledge, but don't stop with that. I will also uh, give it to you in such a way, structure it to you in such a way that uh, and, and provide you the inspiration to do sadhana so that you will do the sadhana and gain the wisdom also. So when Krishna is giving this, he is not talking about it as a concept, external concept. He is talking from his experience. See, there was a, a master who was not so well educated in terms of uh, the worldly education and all that. So his student, one who used to go and take his blessings and learn the sadhana, that student was a great scholar. Now he want he had some questions on the uh, Upanishads in in a particular Upanishad he has he had some questions. Now instead of going and asking his master, he went to different uh, scholars, various uh, pundits, and started asking them. Why he never went to his master? Because he thought he's a great master, he's my guru, but. He is not educated, he has not read the scriptures and all thoroughly. So, uh, let me go to a person who has read the scriptures uh, properly. He had a very limited concept. Not that he was not devoted, but his understanding was very limited. So, what happened was that he went to various pundits, scholars, and uh, asked them and his questions were actually very subtle and when he asked them they explained things to a certain extent but it was not really answering what he was uh, answering his questions so for almost a few years he went about this exercise and then one day he met a great pundit. He was a pundit of the Sanskritam language and he was also a, a Veda pundit. He had uh, mastered the Vedas in a scholastic way. And he went to him and asked him. To which uh, that pundit said, uh, uh, do you have any guru? He said, yes. Who is he? He mentioned this great uh, yogi's name. And this, the moment the pundit heard this person's name, he got shocked. He said, you have him as your guru. He has chosen you rather as his disciple. And you are coming and asking me. He said, I cannot get venture into... They are providing you answers because he said it is only with your guru's blessings that I have become a scholar. I had this desire many, many years back and then I happened to meet your guru who was, who was a great yogi and I expressed this desire to him and he blessed me. He, and I asked him, what should I do? He said, you don't need to worry. God will show you the way. And after that, I started gaining knowledge. I had many opportunities and thus I have become a scholar. So throughout, I have felt uh, his uh, energy, his presence, which has supported me. I don't have any knowledge. He was a very humble person, you know. So when uh, this man uh, heard this, he was stunned. He said, for last few years I have been uh, 
uh, trying to understand this. But here is a great scholar whom I admire. He says, it is only because of your guru that I have learnt. And this person asked him, have you asked him any doubts? He said, yes. Whenever certain subtleties I am not able to understand, I have uh, sought out uh, your guru and I have asked and he immediately explains. So this man got very confused. So he went back to his guru and he said, Sir, you never told me one thing. He said, what? You never told me that you had all the knowledge of the scriptures. <laughs> to which the Guru told him, no, I don't have any knowledge of all these scriptures. He said, no, 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 you're just simply saying you're testing me. Uh, he showed the Upanishads and he said, okay, this is the doubt which I have. So, so uh, the master didn't know the Sanskritam language also. He said, can you translate it and tell me what, what is that? So, as he was translating, the master gave him the deeper meaning. What are the various dimensions and all that. And this uh, uh, man was so stunned because what he gave was so unique. It was full of that spiritual energy and it exactly, you know, the, we say, you know, the uh, in a, uh, jigsaw, uh, jigsaw puzzle, we say, everything fits in. So everything started fitting in so perfectly. And uh, he was so inspired. So he asked his guru, Sir, how is it that you have not read any scriptures? That's what you're saying. But when this was told to you, immediately you gave the subtler points. Whereas I went to many scholars, but they were unable to solve this. He said, it's very simple. Whatever you are reading is my experience. I am experiencing all this. So, I am actually not explaining the scriptures. I am only telling you from my experience. Like for example, if you go to that saint and say, Anena prasavishya dvam meshavo stvishtakamaduk. Let this be your ishtakamaduk. What does it mean? Now, he is a person who, 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 has complete, who had complete control over his mind and he had awakened the, this power, the Ishtakama Dhuk within him. So, he will immediately get, be able to explain. It was like that. So, that was the moment when this man understood the difference between true knowledge, wisdom and external knowledge. So, that has been so beautifully indicated in these two verses, verse number 9 where he said, Tad Artham, Karma, means do action, perform action for the sake of that, referring to Yajna. And in this verse he says, Anena Prasavishyadvam, by this may you propagate, Esha Vostvishta Kamadu, let this be the wish-fulfilling cow of your desires. So, if you are going along with the flow of the master, you will be able to catch it. The, see, this is again uh, an aspect of the yogic approach. In the yogic approach, we don't try to derive some meaning. We just go along with the flow. Who sets that flow of energy? It is the master. Here, uh, Vyasa has written this. It is a direct words of Lord Krishna. So, whatever energy Lord Krishna is setting, if you learn to flow with that, you will gain this entire wisdom. But in between, if you bring your ego, if you bring your limited understanding and try to you know, project things and this, that, <laughs> it will not work. You may uh, gain some uh, some information in bits and pieces, but the puzzle will not be solved. So, anena prasavishyadvam, by this may you propagate. So, the moment he says, by this, anena, by this, you, go, you need to expand it. Use the yogic approach and expand it. By this means, 
by internalizing the principle of yajna now this does not refer to merely yajna as a concept it is referring to yajna as your inner experience in the previous verse it was more like a concept because he, he was introducing that of course we used the yogic approach in so many different dimensions were given and so that itself would have helped you to internalize it a bit but now he is uh, emphatically saying that he is laying a lot of emphasis on that so remember sadhana is not merely appreciating see if you just say oh the sunday sessions are so wonderful great that is all not enough what change has it brought in your life you say that sir i had these 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 habits earlier now with this the sunday sessions all those habits have gone negative here i'm talking of negative habit let's say i was addicted to alcohol i was addicted to smoking today all that has gone then it means you have internalized it sir i was very stressed i used to be stressed now i have become more calm i have learned to handle pressure i am able to face the challenges with more strength then means you have internalized it if you keep saying sunday lectures are so wonderful amazing session sir oh yogeshri you have great knowledge this all poetry you know <laughs> you give what are you doing in your life same thing <laughs> you know it's continuing then that has not become this that means far away the wisdom is still far away it's not that the wisdom is far away you are, you you have maintained the distance so anena prasavishyadvam when will this prasavishyadvam happen only when you internalize it that is the meaning of anena when will this yagna become ishta kama dukh for you esha the key there is in esha when you internalize it when it make when you make it a part of your own so in the till the previous sessions we were seeing all this separately right sahayagna praja now uh, similarly prasavishyadvam ishta kama dukh when you join it with these two words anena and esha anena prasavishyadvam anena means by this esha was twista kama duk now it will give you uh, a very deep wisdom that's what i said you know it will start speaking to you more and more as you go into the depth see in our yogic approach we don't consider uh, uh, knowledge as an you uh, know as a as a concept as an inanimate thing we say god is saraswati live you know it it it's like a live person we bring that bhavana we don't consider wealth as an inanimate thing we say god is lakshmi we energize everything we give life to every aspect of uh, our experiences that is the beauty of this yogic approach so anena prasavishyadvam prasavah we were seeing that see now when uh, we we saw a few dimensions last week i'll just give you one or two more and then we can proceed further but now when these things are being given it will make more sense to you it it will you you will understand it with more depth because you 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 would have started seeing this difference between external knowledge and internalizing you may know 100 things it doesn't matter you may have internalized one thing 
that is what will help you a yogi is one who learn, who has mastered this process of internalizing so he see uh, uh, at an advanced stage what you will be able to do is you will be able to instantly convert knowledge into wisdom anything you learn you will internalize immediately that moment itself that is a very advanced level that's how yogis keep on learning and they get very quick results and they keep on getting transformed how it is by mastering this principle of internalization initially you require more time to internalize why because you have your own concepts your own belief system the master will say one thing but you you will believe something else coming from your past karmas so there is a struggle so you need to work on it so that those blocks are removed then you will be able to internalize but as you keep advancing the internalization pro, uh, process also becomes uh, very fast so prasava we were seeing uh, a few dimensions of prasava so the the primary thing from a yogic point of view is being born again giving birth to a new you inside yourself that is called prati prasava prati prasava sadhana very powerful principle the focused prati prasava sadhana we will see in the future that has to be given as an empowerment cannot be uh, simply be given just like that you know because that will shake you that will help you to burn the karmas very fast at a very deep uh, level but whatever sadhana you are doing is also based on the same principle of pratiprasav only the degree may be less every day when you are doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana the transformation within you is happening at a minute level so consistently when you keep doing it suddenly you will find a big change you should give yourself a reasonable amount of time so prasavaha means fruit or product external achievements whatever you want to create that we saw last week prasavah also means actually giving birth so giving birth to children that is a literal meaning but even that has a very deep yogic significance like last week i was saying when a child is born a generation is born that's how a yogi uh, looks at it in the Uh, mahabharata it has been so beautifully explained where in the war many many people died so the previous generation uh, went off and the new generation came so that transition has been so beautifully uh, explained from a philosophical angle you know and that that's what lord krishna was doing it is said so uh, very interesting you are also doing that in a mini way in your life so prasavah means birth it means generation giving birth to a child I, I, literally prasavah means generation also so that is why we are, i had combined both and given you that meaning so just so that you get that bhavana that every activity which you do don't consider it as a mere worldly activity the effect of that will continue it will continue in life in the modern uh, thinkers some people have come up, come up with this theory of butterfly effect and this that and all it's all one on the same only 
it's a feeble echo of what is being given that is every action every thought every emotion which you generate has an effect actually on the world you may not be aware of it today in the yogic parlance they call it as collective consciousness so when a yogi does tapas when he does meditation and when positive vibrations are given out that affects the collective consciousness the great yogis who meditate they balance the energies they play a major role in balancing the energies in the world they counter many many negative energies which are thrown by the thrown into the collective consciousness uh, thrown into the collective consciousness means what say for example if you if one person thinks negative now 10 people are sitting and thinking negatively 1000 people are sitting in negatively that creates a certain kind of energy uh, uh, a certain kind of environment but all this is in terms of quantity supposing there is a yogi there one yogi can counteract thousands and thousands of negative forces so when you develop spiritually that is a great service yagna yagna means sacrifice it means service why is it considered to be the greatest service developing spiritually because what you will be contributing to the collective consciousness will be purity positivity will be divine energy so that is why they said do your sadhana the spiritual development is the greatest seva you can do to the world and spiritual service is considered to be the highest service among the uh, you know all other kinds of seva why because it uh, it creates a tremendous impact in the collective consciousness so that is prasava so beautiful uh, uh, such a beautiful word you know now we'll see just see one more dimension then we'll move along this will help you so much prasava also means flowering blossoming is used the perfect word you know see in spiritual development what are we aiming at we are aiming at flowering of our personalities your goal should be to make your personality flower to bring the best out of you that is the aim of this wisdom each one of you can be equated to a flower with a lot of potential but today all that is in a dormant stage you have not at flowered the blossoming has not happened yet but as you start doing the sadhana as you start exposing yourself to the sunday session and then you're doing your daily sadhana what will happen is all your internal blocks will start getting released and when your internal blocks start getting released your personality will start flowering blossoming in your way you should never try to copy somebody else that is why it is said by the great yogis that never do uh, never do what the master does do what the master says that advice is always given by the great yogis why because what the ma- the master does will be according to his flowering but what he says will will help you because that will exactly uh, match your condition so a rose will bloom as a rose a jasmine will bloom as a jasmine a rose should not try to become like a jasmine or vice versa so you should bloom in your way you have that uniqueness 
And when you do the sadhana properly, when you surrender to the master and receive that energy, and with that higher blessings when you do the sadhana, you will flower in your way. All your dormant powers will start manifesting. You will be able to materialize all your goals. You will be able to uh, constructively contribute towards the society, the, towards the welfare of your society, of this world. You will be able to add on positivity to that collective consciousness. So it is through inner transformation that the world can get transformed. Not by external, uh, so-called external transformation, external changes. The external changes have to be backed by this inner transformation. So that is called prasavaha. So one of the things which you can understand when I said, you know, you are unique, you, you be yourself. So that is something which you need to practice. Never try to copy others. You may do something which another person is doing incidentally because that is also, that is a part of your nature. This doesn't mean you have to do something unnecessarily in a different way. <laughs> that is also a form of ego. What we are talking about here is, don't, um, uh, uh, you know, stifle your nature because of a complex. You keep comparing yourself with others. And you are trying to mold yourself in a, uh, in, a, in a way which is artificial. The more you try to do that, the less will the flowering of your personality be. So a yogi is one who has blossomed. See, uh, how many masters have come? Each one was different no, in terms of expression. Even if you take the different avataras of Lord Vishnu, for example. Totally, it is said that direct avataras, 24 avataras were there. Out of which 10 avataras were, were very famous. We will take those 10 avataras also. Each avatara is distinct and different. You take Lord Narasimha. Very, very, very powerful, no? That um, aggressiveness to combat evil was fully manifest, no? And then if you take Vamana Avatara, young boy, as a young boy, you know, full of sattva, sattvic wisdom, that was exhibited. You take the, you take Rama and then you take Krishna. It looks like, uh, you know, two extremes. Apparently, what are they trying to say? In each avatara, whatever was required, that quality was manifest. But internally, everyone was a manifestation of that infinite. So, it is that inner flowering which matters. Have you blossomed in your way? It is not how much you know that matters. Sir, I am uh, now, uh, I have uh, by hearted uh, everything in the Bhagavad Gita. I can just keep chanting. That is an all okay. That is uh, a very nice talent which some people have. Uh, it's good. But that is the, that has nothing to do with the spiritual growth. We are not belittling anything. Every talent is good only. But the real spiritual growth can come only by, uh, by this process of flowering or blossoming, which he calls as prasava. Prasavishyadvam. May, by this may you flower. By this may your personality blossom. By this may you shine May your uniqueness shine through you. 
see if we if you go into the depth of it and get that message then it will become a powerful sadhana tool for you so day by day day by day become a better version of yourself in uh, the modern jagan they say no version 2.2 version 1 version 2 even in the app updates and all they say 2.1 2.0 2.1 2.2 they say they say like that no now you're just mechanically seeing all this why can't you learn a lesson from that if machines are being upgraded don't you think you should upgrade yourself don't you think your inner self should be upgraded that is the very process of sadhana so day by day day by day day by day become a better version of yourself keep on upgrading yourself with the spiritual energy and what will be the end of it what we started with prati prasav you will be fully born again that is the state of self realization or god realization so sahayagnyah praja srishtva puro vacha prajapati what did he, what did prajapati the creator say anena prasavishyadvam by internalizing everything me you propagate me you blossom me you flower fully yesha vostvishta kama dukh let this be the wish fulfilling cow of all your desires of all your ichha let me you manifest all your goals this is the powerful message of this verse okay so now we'll move to the next verse verse number 11 devan bhavayata nena devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu vah te deva bhavayantu vah parasparam bhavayantah parasparam bhavayantah shreya param avapsyath shreya param avapsyath devan bhav yatanena anena again by this he is continuing from the previous verse therefore he is using the word this so you have to keep on internalizing it see it's not that ah oh, as i have internalized it finished now let me go no you have to keep at it again and again that's why we are saying uh, attend the sessions every week do the sadhana every day that repetition is very important in spiritual sadhana repetition of the sadhana uh, when you put in repeated efforts that will give you what psychologists call as a cumulative effect that's why devan bhava bhavayata anena means may you nourish the gods by this by this means by by what by agnya <laughs> very interesting may you nourish the gods by this see what is your concept of gods gods are superior beings which is true only gods mean devaha mean divine being so we seek their blessings right normally but here he is saying the opposite may you nourish the gods by this means you practice yagna and through that you take care of the gods in, in other words bhavayata 
uh, it, it has a lot of meanings. Bhavana, what is a, a yogic significance in terms of sadhana, all that we'll see. But just if you read it, prima, uh, if, you, if you just uh, read it uh, on the surface, that itself will hit you. You go to a god and seek blessings and you say, please give me. But here he says, you nourish the gods, look after their welfare. So may you nourish the gods by this, Devan Bhavayata Anena. And then the next line, Te Deva Bhavayantu Vaha. May the gods nourish you. So, he is talking of the principle of giving and taking, exchange, the principle of exchange. What is the yogic significance of Devaha, God? All that we will be seeing. Just as um, uh, Yajna, you know, when, when that was first introduced, everybody thought it was just the fire ritual. And when we got deeper into it, you know, how much is there? In that process now, we will be exploring this uh, uh, deeper significance of Deva, the, uh, uh, gods. Very, very powerful words. Who, what does Dev, Devaha represent at the relative level? What does Dev, Devaha represent at the absolute level? Within the relative level also, according to the context, the significance changes. All that will be seen. This, this, this has been put in a very poetic way. May you nourish the gods by this. May the gods nourish you. Te deva bhavayantu vaha. Parasparam bhavayantaha. Parasparam means that exchange. Each other. Nourishing each other. Parasparam bhavayantaha means with full cooperation when you function, Shreyaha Paramavapsyataha Shreyaha Param Shreyaha means the highest good is talking of self-realization or God-realization. Avaps Avapsyatha means may you obtain, may you get. So nourishing each other shall you obtain the highest good. See, for one second, you uh, forget about the deeper meaning of gods and all that. Okay. Let's just take the, uh, read the verse uh, from the surface level because that itself gives you a powerful principle. May you nourish the gods by this. Means, may you take care of their welfare. May the gods nourish you. You also receive the blessings. Nourishing each other means you think of the other person's welfare, the other person thinks of your welfare. So there is a, a parasparam, an exchange of energy. So with this exchange of energy, what will happen? May you obtain the highest good. You will reach the highest state of self-realization or God-realization. So, we will be going into a lot of depth in this verse because uh, your uh, understanding of gods uh, may not be complete. So, we will have to see uh, what, what he means by Devaha and then what does he mean by Bhavayata, nourishing. Uh, because unless you understand that in depth, the second line where he says, Parasparam bhavayantaha shreya, shreya parama, param avapsyata. You can attain the highest good in this process. So, the first thing which you have to immediately grasp when we just basically see the translation is that he, what is he asking you to do basically? He is asking you to contribute in life and he is asking you to receive the blessings with grace. Which means function 
in a spirit of service and sacrifice and also receive whatever benefits which you deserve. Don't shy away from that also. This is the balance which he is trying to uh, mention here. By the moment he uses the word parasparam, it's a beautiful uh, word, you know. Because the in the uh, next verse, he will be explaining this further. See, here he is talking about the exchange of energy, parasparam. Parasparam bhavayantaha. Now in the next verse, he will, he will be telling you what are all the diff uh, next verse and then the subsequent uh, verses also. He will be telling you what are all the different attitudes when you, uh, you know, give and take, when this exchange of energy happens. Uh, how, how will a tamasic person do it? How will a rajasic person approach it? How will a sattvic person approach it? And what will be the results of that? All that he will be explaining. So, uh, as, as I have repeatedly kept telling you, one verse leads to another verse. See, in this yogic approach, that's, that's how we look at it. One verse leads to another verse. So, the first verse is a foundation to the next verse. It will help you understand the next verse better. And in that verse itself, there are a lot of uh, principles which you can gain. And so, it is like a connecting link by itself also. It's like a gold mine and it also helps you to understand the coming verses better. So, one leads to this. Uh, to the other. So, there is an exchange of energy between these verses. One helps the other. Like we saw, no, verse 9 and 10. Tat tu to uh, anena. So, you use the word that and then to this. When you read both, it intensifies your wisdom. So, life is always based on this principle of parasparam. A person who uh, isolates himself or herself in terms of uh, the ego I am talking of. Such a person cannot contribute. Neither will such a person be able to contribute nor will he be able to receive blessings. You take any unit in life. For example, you take your family. Now, you will have to contribute something and you will also have to receive something. That, that balance should be there. Parasparam bhavayantaha should be there. You take an office, office environment. All the employees, each one, will have to contribute. And they will receive the benefits. If there is only giving, no taking, that cannot be sustained. If there is only taking, no giving, that also cannot be sustained. Parasparam bhavayantaha is the principle by which anything in life can flourish, any unit can flourish. So, if you want your life to flourish, which is what he said in the previous verse, no? By this may you propagate prasavishyadvam, he said that, no? So, what is that principle of yajna which will help you in flourishing in life? This is it, parasparam bhavayantaha. You need to have your individual talents so that you can contribute. But you also need to be a team player. You should have the team spirit. It is very interesting, uh, the T20 World Cup in cricket uh, uh, concluded, no, just last month. So, India won the cup. Now, if you see the individual performances, that was not standing out. Each one contributed a little, little, but as a team, they, you know, they won. 
So individually also they contributed, but it was all in the context of the team, the team winning. Nobody was looking at mere personal glory there. See, sometimes what can happen is there can be real, real superstars in, in a team. And uh, the, uh, you know those few people may perform so wonderfully, but as a team, the team may fail. Then the parasparam or the exchange of energy is down there. That's what it means. So they have lifted the T20 World Cup. They have become world champions. Why? Because they have unconsciously practiced this. That's what I'm saying. Anywhere there is success, if you go deep into it, they would have practiced the principle of yajna. They may not call it yajna. They may not call it, call it as parasparam, bhavayanta and all that. But the same principles they would have practiced unconsciously. Now you are learning this fully, consciously. You are learning all in, in totality all these principles. So if you start practicing this in your life, just imagine uh, what amount of uh, benefits you will gain. So today, the trend is this parasparam bhavayanta, this principle is dying. People are only thinking of I, me, myself. Even the family units are disintegrating. See, I, when I was studying in school, the definition of a family was myself, fa father, mother, grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, aunties, you know, everything put together was called a family. Okay, at least uncles and aunties were called extended families. The there is fathers, brothers, they were classified as ext extended families. Today, in the same school education, what they are teaching is, family means you, your father, mother. Grandparents they are calling as an external, uh, extended family. See, the wrong values are being taught at that age itself. Unfortunately, the education system uh, has, uh, is going in that wrong direction. Now, what will be the end of it? Tomorrow, there will be a further constriction. Family means you. Parents also, they will call, call them as, ex, as a part of extended family, which means the selfishness is being promoted. That is being encouraged. It is a sad thing. That is why this ancient wisdom is the, is the solution to this. Youngsters, if they pick up this wisdom, that is when the society can flourish. He is talking of prasavishyadvam. That is possible only if you expand your identification. That is the principle of parasparam bhavayanta. So, we will stop with this today. I have just given the basic translation of this verse and uh, we saw a small thing about Parasparam Bhavayantaha. In the coming weeks, we will go into more depth. Uh, a lot of sadhana principles are there in this verse. The word Devaha itself is very, very significant. And when you understand the deeper meaning of all this, you will be totally amazed. You will get so many tools to uh, uh, for your self-development, self-purification, and uh, which will contribute towards your spiritual advancement. Okay, so we'll see all this in the coming sessions. So now we'll do the meditation, Nididhyasana. Gently close your eyes. Do 
deep breathing with every breath i am going deeper and deeper into a state of relaxation feel the divine vibrations with every breath i am going deep into myself beyond this physical body beyond these various emotions and thoughts lies my essential higher self my higher self is infinite and divine
From this moment onwards, I choose to internalize this principle of Yajna. I am Swayam Prakashit, Self-Illuminating. Offer your gratitude to God Supreme. Offer your gratitude to your Guru and all the Holy Masters. Slowly come back. Wriggle your fingers, your toes, rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. Gently rub your eyes, your cheeks, forehead, top of the head, back of the head and neck. Slowly open your eyes.
welcome back so it was a very powerful session which we had today many subtle points have been given the word prasa vishadvam represents that principle of total transformation so that will inspire you you can keep that as your goal spiritual goal and every principle which is being expounded to you will help you to achieve that all these principles are interrelated they help each other the parasparam the exchange of energy can be seen in the way these verses are constructed very interesting okay so we'll go into more depth in the next session thank you very much hari om